the place to be tonight. The Super 16 and the WNIT, the American Athletic Conference versus the Mid-American Conference. The Memphis Tigers have traveled to Bowling Green to take on the Falcons. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us alongside Samantha Momeyer. I'm Brad Wozniki. For these two teams, they are meeting for the first time all time. And for the Falcons and the Tigers, they get it done with defense. Bowling Green last time out on the road against Green Bay held Green Bay to just 51 points, while Memphis on the season only allows 60 points. And Brad, Monday was Bowling Green's first ever time getting a WNIT road win in school history. And Memphis, just like Bowling Green, is their only team left in the respective conference playing in the postseason. And Allison Day had an efficient performance last time out for the Bowling Green Falcons, playing in her only season with Bowling Green after transferring over from Loyola Chicago. She was 12 of 16 from the floor, having a career best with her offensive numbers. It's obvious that Day has made an impact as soon as she got into a Falcons jersey. She's averaging over 13 points and five rebounds a game, and most recently coming off a double-double with 25 points and 10 rebounds. From one veteran to another. How about Jamira Shoots for the Memphis Tigers? 115 career games. She's coming up her third straight game with 20 plus points. Shoots plays with a lot of confidence and she's confident from all over the floor. The attention she draws to herself really allows the rest of her teammates an opportunity to score. This season, Shoots was even named all conference second team honors. Tigers come in here 22 and 10. The starting five for the Tigers: Hannah Riddick, Madison Griggs, the outstanding outside shooter; Amani Jefferson, Jamira Shoots, and Destiny Thomas, the six foot four freshman. For the Bowling Green Falcons, who are 12 and 2 inside the Stroh Center this season, Bowling Green will start Amy Velasco in place of the injured Nyla Hampton, Alyssa Brett, Jocelyn Tate, the super sophomore. Allison Day, the veteran we talked about, and Lexi Fleming, another ball handler in that starting five for the Bowling Green Falcons. And we are moments away from the tip-off. It's time now to bring in the third member of our crew, Jenna de Blasi. Thanks, Brad. Earlier this week, the Falcons defeated Green Bay, and head coach Freilich said that it took a great defensive effort, but we also made timely shots and played with a lot of grit. Similar to the Falcons' last matchup, this Memphis team has the size, so the Falcons are looking to minimize that and not let the ball get too close to the rim. With both of these teams' season on the line, it comes down to who wants it more. Brad. Thank you, Jenna, and there is plenty of orange in the stands here tonight at the Stroh Center. Thursday night, WNIT. The winner of this one, We'll play the winner of Clemson and Florida. That game scheduled to tip off at 7 o'clock. There is Destiny Thomas. The Bowling Green students, they're ready to go. Falcons win the opening tip. Bowling Green opened WNIT play with the win over Liberty. That was a battle of two teams that have combined for 51 wins. As Allison Day, we've seen so many times, gets it started for Bowling Green offensively. And Jocelyn Tate not quite able to save it, but Bowling Green gets that first bucket. Samantha, that allows the Falcons under head coach Robin Fralick to get their defense set immediately full court. And kind of a quick turnaround for both teams coming into tonight. You know, you get that big win on Monday and then immediately have to turn around on Thursday and bring that same energy both of these teams brought just earlier in the week. Here comes Hannah Riddick. She'll give it up to Madison Griggs. Riggs, a hometown product, right out of Memphis, Tennessee. Shoots as Alyssa Brett goes down. The defense chance early from the Bowling Green fans, and it leads to a Tigers turnover. Velasco up ahead to the running Tate. 4-0 Bowling Green. This is just how things started for Bowling Green in that WNIT opener against Liberty, putting the pressure on early with the defense. Alyssa Brett comes up with a takeaway. Bowling Green outscored Liberty by 16 in the first quarter in that first round. Allison Day a little bit strong with that one. Pulled in by Thomas. And we've seen it happen before for the Falcons. That super quick offensive start for them is usually huge. And along with that press they put on is pretty deadly at the beginning of the game. Too much on that one. Lands in the hands of Destiny Thomas who is tied up immediately by Alyssa Brett. The Memphis Tigers... 
with the number two team in the American Athletic Conference. And the Tigers 2-0 against the Mid-American Conference this season. They saw the Miami Red Hawks back in November, defeated the Red Hawks by 25. And then to get here, Memphis defeated Ball State. Had Ball State won that game, we would have been looking at the fourth meeting of the season between Ball State and Bowling Green. And Memphis being in this game tonight is the first time since 1999 that the program has made it to the Sweet 16. That's under new head coach Katrina Merriweather, who we will hear more about as we continue on at the line. Amani Jefferson. And Jefferson good on the first five foot six junior from Northport, Florida. Started her career at Wright State playing for Katrina Merriweather. Amani Jefferson, last game, 15 points, six of nine from the field. Hits both. A minute and a half gone by here in the opening quarter. It was a very even first quarter between Bowling Green and Green Bay on Monday night as Jocelyn Tate has herself an N1. Able to get downhill and get to where she wants with that strong hand. This went right by Hannah Riddick. And Brad, you mentioned it was a pretty even matchup for Green Bay and the Falcons at the beginning of the game. And one of the reasons the Falcons started to pull away was their rebounding advantage. The 41 over 30 over Green Bay. And that's something if they could bring tonight against another very defensive team would definitely come to their benefit. Let's talk about rebounding advantage. How about 12 offensive rebounds for Memphis turning into 19 second chance points against Ball State. A huge separation point. Off the back rim, battle for the rebound. Riddick has it. Two defenders there, and as she tried to go up, the official says Bowling Green got her on the arm. Jocelyn Tate not happy with that call. Anna Riddick to the line. Riddick out of Calgary, Alberta. But here it is, just what we talked about. Second chance opportunities. Riddick right there. Pulled it in with multiple Falcons on her. And Riddick on the season, a 61% free throw shooter, averages just over five points a game. She is relentless on the glass over the last four games, averaging better than three offensive rebounds a game. Back to a two-point ball game. And Bowling Green against Green Bay, the second quarter was where the Falcons created that separation. 13 to five advantage, including a Lexi Fleming three that sent Bowling Green in the locker room with an eight point advantage. Allison Day going away from the basket that time, couldn't score it. Chance for Memphis to tie or take the lead here early. Shoots, contact and knocked away by Brett. Up ahead, Velasco. Bowling Green has a three on two opportunity. Velasco's pass tipped and stolen. Jefferson slowed up and wisely brings it out. Memphis 10 and 3 in true road games this season. Those three losses coming to number one, South Carolina, Temple by 11 in the conference opener, and then South Florida, who was number 24 in the final coaches' poll of the season. Beautiful fadeaway from Griggs right on the elbow. South Florida, by the way, did win the American Athletic Conference. It was just knocked out in the second round of the, of the NCAA tournament. No good for Lexi Fleming. Here's Jefferson taking matters into her own hands. It's tipped in. Jocelyn Tate has it. See, Bowling Green wants to run. Memphis not the quickest team getting back. Day turns. Off glass and it rolls off. You want to see Day though continue to be aggressive and Robin Frelick's going to make an early move sending Sophie Zekin to the scorer's table. Riddick against Day. Got it up and it's Hannah Riddick going back to the line. Katie Hempfling also going to check in for Bowling Green. Memphis will make the substitution bringing in Destiny Jackson. And there's Katie Hempfling, who has played more games than any Bowling Green player. Over 150 in her career. Anna Riddick, her father, Eric, 
He's a football player at North Carolina State. Also was an all-ACC long jump champion. He was a multiple sport athlete in her high school days. And she's looking to give Memphis the lead with this second free throw. She does. On the season, Memphis has a team 65% at the free throw line. Brett. Destiny Jackson hand in her face, and that is off the mark for Brett. And Brett's just trying to shake that one off if she goes down the floor. And you can already tell from how back and forth this game is so far. We're going to mention it probably a million more times throughout the broadcast how defensive this game is going to be for both of these teams. Steal after steal, just back and forth, very quick pace. Shoots, got Brett in the air, it's short. That's the matchup you pay to see. Alyssa Brett and Jamira shoots. Off a quick step there from Jocelyn Tate. The ball was last touched by Memphis. And Shelby Brown will make her first appearance. Spent the last couple of seasons at Northwest Florida. And right behind Brown is Jada Wright. Jada Wright brings more size at six foot four, fifth year player from Chicago, Illinois. And there's Olivia Hill for the Bowling Green Falcons, six foot junior. Memphis by one, a little over four minutes gone by. Hempfling goes to work. Turns, lost it, finds Hill. Hill's bounce pass along the baseline. Zekin was blocked. And a jump ball is called. Bowling Green will have it on the baseline. It's a good find by Olivia Hill, but again, you're going up against some trees there for Memphis. Velasco with the left hand. No. Zekin. Sophie Zekin had both hands on that ball while Jada Wright had a piece of Zekin's arm. That's where Bowling Green's got to stay tough all night on the glass. Already Memphis is plus five rebounding. Three baseline out of bounds, back to back to back. Inside to Zekin, she's got great position. Being bodied up and a foul. Sophie Zekin earned that whistle. And exactly what we just saw is something that the Falcons can use to their advantage tonight is fouling. For Memphis, having some troubles underneath the hoop because you're going to see a player like Wright pretty much just guard underneath the basket. So if there's a way to get around or draw that foul. Sophie Zekin, four and a half points a game, a 58% free throw shooter. She averages 13 minutes a game off the bench. Robin Frelick has seen Zekin improve her scoring average, her field goal percentage, her rebounds, and her minutes. Can't hit the second. We're tied at seven, almost midway through this first quarter. Shelby Brown left wing. And shoots. We'll give it up to Wright. Wright spins into the paint. Follow up. Bowling Green finally comes away with it. Hill put it on the floor. A reach in from Shelby Brown. Fourth team foul for the Tigers. And we have reached our first media timeout. 438 left first quarter. Bowling Green and Memphis tied at seven. Jocelyn Tate finding Allison Day to get it started for Bowling Green. And then the Tigers answering back. The pull-up for Madison Griggs. WNIT right here on ESPN. Ball game tied at seven. Let's bring back Jenna DeBlasi. Earlier this week, BGSU's head coach Robin Fralick 
describe that all preseason and all season you talk about March this month being a huge part of the season but now we're here so we are going to enjoy this because we have worked so hard to get this opportunity and for both programs to find so much success during their prospective seasons and for the seniors to have yet another chance to play especially for the Falcons in front of a crowd like this on home court is really a cool moment here in the Super 16. Thank you Jenna. Robin Fralick, see what she accomplished during her time at Division II. Ashland earned the opportunity to be a Division I head coach. These last couple of seasons have really shown what Robin has developed and gotten back to what we've come to expect at Bowling Green. From the corner, that's a three, and it's off the mark. Rebounded by Tate. Jocelyn Tate trying to push the tempo. Shelby Brown trying to stay in front. It's Tate's bounce pass right into traffic and turned over. Bowling Green fans there were looking for Tate to shoot the basketball, and now Tate has just picked up her second foul. Olivia Hill will check in along with Amy Velasco. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of mirrored substitutions for both teams going into each possession, honestly, changing it up. Bowling Green's 15 foul. Memphis has four as well. Destiny Jackson, 60% free throw shooter. She was a starter at one point for this team from December 8th to January 3rd, but has since come off the bench. Her season high is 14 points. She averages a little over four a game. Jackson, the second. Memphis by two. Danielle Wench, Welch in for the Tigers. Less than four to play, first quarter. Memphis has already gotten the line eight times. They've knocked down seven of them. Bowling Green, one of three. Allison Day is denied inside by Wright. Turns again, scores it this time. That's Allison Day. You were talking about this, Samantha Momeyer. Day has to continue to have this kind of performance. Yeah, the first few missed shots, kind of out of character for Day, but you know, once she gets started, she's going to be huge for the Falcons. We saw her perform having pretty much one-third of the Falcons' points last game, 25 points, and performing defensively with 10 rebounds. I mean, that's huge for the team. Knocked away for a moment from Amani Jefferson. Down to five in the shot clock, and Bowling Green students... We're going with the early shot clock call. Memphis heaves up a three and it goes. How about that? We're gonna have to see that last three again in a moment here. With under three to play first quarter, it's Brett giving it up Velasco. Hill, Brett, three. Unable to tie up the ball game. That last three, by the way, was the first of the game. Looks like a trick shot. Memphis only shoots from beyond the arc at 30%. Jefferson to right. Mid-range shot no good, and Imani Jefferson clearly over the back of Lexi Fleming. Well, this is not how you normally beat the shot clock, but it paid off right there. Just smile about that one if you're Shelby Brown. <laughs> she heard the shot clock countdown from the students. It's Lexi Fleming at the line. By the way, for Shelby Brown, just her third three of the season. She's now three wow. of 12. <laughs> Lexi Fleming on the season, a 76% free throw shooter, averages almost nine points a game. She's had a dozen points in each of the first two WNIT games. Gets the Falcons to within one. And stepping over the line, Shelby Brown on the inbounds. See if Bowling Green can take advantage as Jamira shoots. We'll check in for Shelby Brown. Brett, good fake to cut to the basket and score. Completely lost her defender. For Alyssa Brett, her first points 
Brett, Bowling Green's leading scorer on the season, averages nearly 15 a game to go along with six rebounds. That scoring average up four points a game from a season ago. And as Velasco and Fleming collide, they may have been pushed right into one another. Robin Frelick's trying to point that out as Olivia Hill picks up the personal. Madison Griggs and Lynetta Williams on the floor for Memphis now. It's Destiny Thomas at the line, just 44% at the free throw line this season. No problem though on the first. Thomas out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Named the all-conference all freshman team. Eight points, eight rebounds last game. And that's what she's known for for this team. Her role right now is getting on the glass. Here's Brett up top, guarded by Jefferson. Today, left hand, yes, Bowling Green in front. For Allison Day, she's got a half dozen. Following up that 25.10 rebound performance against Green Bay. Day just being forced to adjust to that hook layup instead of her usual up and under or just a drop step move. 15 on the shot clock, plenty of time for the Tigers. Shoots. Griggs, one on one. Tries a three. Again, I think Bowling Green students might have gotten her with that shot clock countdown. Inside of a minute, Alyssa Brett lets it fly. And good effort there by Hill, but unable to save it. Zekin in for day. Well, a different start to this game for Katrina Merriweather's Memphis Tigers. Last time out against Ball State. Memphis started the game on a 20 to nothing run. Held Ball State scoreless for the first six minutes. As Bowling Green looking to add to their slim lead, you get the block as Hill was going up. That's all ball from shoots. About a seven second difference. Shot clock and game clock. Shoots, trying to get around Zeke and Brett is right there and it's going to be Brett with her first personal and shoots a little shaken up after this play see if she may have caught an elbow at the end of this, oh yeah she definitely took some contact to the face Just an aggressive possession back and forth for both teams, Lexi Fleming on that seal too I saw it got elbowed right in the face gave it off to Another teammate to try to run the floor with it. And then back for shoots. Postseason basketball and the way these two teams play defense. You don't like to see plays like that happen, but they do happen a lot. Absolutely. And Jamira shoots, trying to signal that she's okay. There's another look. And they're going to check her out on the bench and bring in Destiny Jackson. And she took contact to the face multiple times there. Tigers 8 of 10 at the free throw line so far in this first quarter. Off the mark. Jackson from Lexington, Kentucky. Rattles in the second. Bowling Green can hold for the final shot of the quarter. The Falcons just 33% from the field this first quarter. Hasn't been pretty for Memphis either. The Tigers just 15%, but they're staying right in it by getting to the charity strike. Down to six, Fleming. Now Velasco, corner, three. 
Zeke in. Got it up, and it rolls off. Would have counted had it gone. A one-point advantage for Bowling Green after the first 10 minutes here inside the Stroh Center. Allison Day leading Bowling Green's offensive attack, working hard on that low block. Memphis chucking it up from distance for the game's only three. And Alyssa Brett, there was her first bucket. It's Bowling Green 15, Memphis 14. Bowling Green Falcons, 29 wins coming in here tonight. The last time the Falcons won 30 games was back in 2013-2014. And while the Tigers coming here, 22 wins, their first 20-plus win season since 2011-2012. That year, they finished 25-8, and lost in the second round of the WNIT. Both of these teams coming in here hoping tonight is not the end of their 2022-23 season. Memphis got a piece of that one. The Tigers opening minute of the second quarter, a chance to go in front. It's been quiet so far for the two leading scorers for their respective teams. Alyssa Brett has two points, while Jamira Schutz has been held scoreless. Part of that you can credit to Alyssa Brett's defense. Long two. Well off the mark. That was Lynetta Williams on that attempt. And besides that trick shot, you mentioned it earlier, but we're really not seeing much action from outside the arc from either team, but especially Memphis right now. It's not a surprise to see Memphis limited in that area. It's not the strength of their team, but it is an area where you thought coming in Bowling Green might be able to take advantage. The Falcons are 0 of 6 beyond the arc. Melissa Brett hits the deck, and she was out of bounds. Brett looking for a foul call, saying, I didn't get down there on my own. Hannah Riddick back into the ball game. See if there should have been something called here or not. And then Brett going after the loose ball. Memphis didn't do anything there to trip her up. It's just tangled up with the feet. A minute and a half gone by. Memphis is just 2 of 15 from the field, but 9 of 12 at the free throw line. Shot clock winding down. Jackson using her arm there against Lexi Fleming. Surprised that wasn't called an offensive foul. It's Velasco finding Fleming. Brett passes up the three, the runner. And trying to get around Brett was Amani Jefferson, and that's number two on Brett. So Brett's got two, and Tate's got two. And Robin Frelick's going to be looking for more good minutes. From Olivia Hill, now you're going back to the situation that we saw in the Mid-American Conference Tournament semifinals against Ball State, where both Alyssa Brett and Jocelyn Tate, again in that game, were in foul trouble. And it's not something that this early in the game you can risk, keeping them into the game. It's really just a matter of having to take them out and deal with the consequences later if there are any. But the Falcons are a team that can count on their bench, and that's something that they're going to have to do right now. And who stepped up when those two battled foul trouble in the MAC tournament semifinals? Olivia Hill. Six points. A season best for her in 13 minutes. And Lexi Fleming fouled going up the floor. First foul of the quarter called on the Tigers, much to the delight of the Bowling Green faithful. Bowling Green so far with three takeaways. Falcons need two more takeaways to set the program record for steals in a season. Three, Lexi Fleming. Bowling Green's first. And for Fleming, she's coming off four of eight beyond the arc against Green Bay. Just hit her 48th three of the season. Shoots it at 32%. And Memphis can't answer on the backside. That's an offensive rebound for Thomas. See what the Tigers do with the fresh 20. Griggs, one-on-one. -on -one. In the lane, Jackson. Last touch by Memphis. Zekin in for Day. Continue to see that rotation of Hill, Zekin, and Day. 
And right now leading this win for the Falcons is Allison Day. She has six points. Lexi Fleming not too far behind and recently with that three has five points. On their side for Memphis, it's Riddick, has, who has three, tied up with Jackson and Brown, who also have three. What you're doing is giving Hill, Zekin, Day a chance to catch their breath, get right back in and just continue to battle with the size that Memphis has. Falcons might not match the hype, but they can match the energy of the forwards. And something else they might also have on them, like I was talking about earlier, is that hook shot kind of sneaking underneath. They've been able to be successful with that tonight so far. Fleming, Zekin trying to post up, gets the catch against Thomas. Over to Hempfling, lines it up. Just off the mark, but there's Velasco for the offensive rebound. Amy Velasco did it with her assist in the last game. 11, a career high. Lexi Fleming heating up. Give her eight points for the ball game and two triples. Fleming, a player that just feeds off the crowd's energy. The Bowling Green fans starting to get on their feet. Bowling Green by a touchdown as Memphis turns it over. This place has erupted. Nyla Hampton's loving it. Bowling Green by seven, 6.03 left in quarter number two. Lexi Fleming, no hesitation. Well, the Bowling Green Falcons are leading this ball game by seven, but without one of their top defensive players. In fact, the Mid-American Conference Defensive Player of the Year, Nyla Hampton. See what Hampton has done in her three years at Bowling Green. She only needs six more steals to become the all-time leader at Bowling Green in career steals. Holds the single season record with 99, but in a walking boot tonight, she was injured in the fourth quarter against Green Bay. It looked like an ankle injury. Didn't practice at all leading up to this one. Unable to go tonight, but I'll tell you what, Bowling Green doing the job defensively still without her. And that's not easy to do with just how much Nyla Hampton has meant to this team. And once again, we mentioned it earlier, but really just the bench stepping up for the Falcons right now. Everyone that is sitting there is contributing to the game right now, whether it's on the offensive end or whether it's on the defensive end. You're not just talking about the defensive game for Nyla Hampton. She averages better than 10 and a half points a game. Her assist numbers, better than three a game. The amount of things that she does just to create Havoc at one end and opportunities for her teammates at the other can't go unnoticed. Not a leading scorer for the Falcons, but definitely someone that still gets on the board and produces numbers, but she's really more, more of that role player. Everyone knows her name because she's playing every single other role. Memphis has yet to score here in quarter number two. Bowling Green on an 8-0 run. Griggs fading away. It's waved off. She walked. Turnover number eight for the Tigers. They average about 15 a game. Bowling Green forces 21 turnovers a game. The hesitation on the shot, too. I think Griggs knew she traveled. Well, it's Griggs who's always looking for space for her outside game, just hasn't been able to find it. And Lexi Fleming comes up short on that three. Bowling Green by nine as we near the midway point of quarter number two. Brad Wasnicki alongside Samantha Momeyer and joined on the sideline by Jenna de Blasi. Our director tonight, Brandon Walters. We thank everyone for joining us on your Thursday evening. Olivia Hill a little too aggressive out high. Now has her second personal. Memphis has tried to do that. Anytime Bowling Green jumps out high, on the screens. Memphis is trying to turn the corner, draw that contact. Both teams doing a good job of keeping their hands up on defense, but really just getting into each other with their hips. Into Jefferson. Jefferson couldn't score it. There's Thomas. It's knocked away from her, but right into the hands of Hannah Riddick. Riddick's got five. It's almost like she handed it to her teammate over the shoulder. 
It's just the second basket for the Tigers inside the arc. They're one of six beyond the arc. Velasco in the lane, lost it. Tipped right back to her, rolls off. Riddick the rebound. Memphis has got to be careful. This lead doesn't balloon to 15 points going into the locker room. Bowling Green has just had a couple of shots, just haven't gone. But the chances have been there. And a foul on the floor. That's Bowling Green's third team foul. Allison Day returns. And Jada Wright in for Destiny Thomas. And Jocelyn Tate is going to come back in with those two personal fouls. I think Robin Freilich recognizing right now that Bowling Green has an opportunity to create some more separation. Just going to have to rely on Tate to be smart. And Amy Velasco trying to push it up the floor and walked before putting it on the deck. Defense got right in front of her as she turned. That's Bowling Green's fourth turnover. Riddick against Hempfling. Pulls up in the paint and rolls it over the front rim. Riddick's got all four of the Tigers' points in this quarter. Day wants it. Right from behind, might have gotten away with a reach in. Hempfling sticks the three. Her 15th three of the season. Bowling Green up eight, nearing three minutes to play. Leaving Griggs open, unable to make Bowling Green pay, and Allison Day was pushed to the floor. The Bowling Green basketball with 3.12 on the clock, and Welch, along with Williams, in for the Tigers. Oh, yeah, Allison Day was thrown to the floor by Jada Wright. That's number two on Wright. And you know she had to have been either thrown, like you said, or pushed to the ground because Allison Day, not a player that you see on the ground very often, really strong inside the paint and on defense. Here's Day putting it right back in the hands of Fleming. Bowling Green overloading that left side. Hempfling trying to find an open teammate, bounces it to Hill. Day is doubled, it's Hempfling again. Not that time, but not a bad look. Still a patient possession for the Falcons. Griggs, front rim. And Riddick fouled, trying to pull in that rebound. And Riddick got in great position for that board. She was knocked to the floor by three Falcons and her teammate, Lynetta Williams. And Brett is back in with two personals. Going to give Lexi Fleming a breather. Williams. There's Jackson unable to get inside. Riddick stripped by Hempling. That's double-digit turnovers now for the Tigers. Bowling Green a chance for a double-digit lead on this possession. Hill, who had some space. Day attacks Williams. Bowling Green by 10. Allison Day's got eight. Falcons now up to 33% from the floor. Their field goal percentage has more than doubled the Tigers. 
Brett got a hand on it for a moment. Riddick, baseline. No. Velasco finds the trailing Brett. Day inside. Turns. Rims out. Everyone in the building wanted that one to go for Allison Day. Falcons would have been up by a dozen. Just over a minute to play first half. Bounce pass to Williams. Great find. The assist for Griggs. That's what you got to do if you're Griggs. You're struggling to finish. Find your post players for easy ones. Especially when their post players have some height advantage right now inside the paint. You'd be thinking they'd be going to them more often. Day along two. It's good. <laughs> Allison Day, the first player tonight to reach double figures. Puts Bowling Green back up 10. <laughs> Bowling Green still going to have a chance for the final shot of the half. Lobbed in to Riddick. She's bumped. And that's number three on Hill. Zekin and Thomas in. Tigers nine of 12 at the free throw line. In and out on the first. It has been a frustrating offensive first half for Katrina Merriweather's squad. You still look up at the board and you're saying, you know, down 10, not all that bad. Only about a second difference now between shot clock and game clock. Great opportunity for the Tigers. Griggs. Riddick, three. Got it. Second Tigers, three of the half. And Memphis able to tighten things up going into the locker room. Thirty to twenty-three, your score at the break. Bowling Green outscoring Memphis fifteen to nine in quarter number two. And Jenna DeBlanzi is standing by with Bowling Green head coach Robin Fralick. With a physical and fast-paced start, what was working so well in the first? I thought we did a good job defensively. I thought once we did settled in and kept them off the free throw line, I thought I just thought we did a good job defensively and offensively when we were patient, got the ball inside, some good things happened. You guys are up by seven right now. What are you going to bring into the second period to keep that separation? We got to keep guarding and we got to keep rebounding. Absolutely, thanks, coach. Thanks, Brad. I'll send it back to you. Keeping it simple, Robin Fralick letting you know. Got to play defense, got to get on the glass if you want to have a chance against Memphis. After 20 minutes of play, Bowling Green leads the Tigers by seven. WNIT Super 16, the Falcons on top of the break. Well, Bowling Green band along with Bowling Green athletic director Derek Vandermeer, Bowling Green Head volleyball coach Daniela Tomich and Bowling Green head football coach Scott Leffler. Entertaining the crowd, putting on a show. Got a little taste of that at the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Here are your first half numbers. Bowling Green, 34% from the field. Memphis just 21%. On the glass, Memphis a plus nine advantage. We knew that was going to be a strength for the Tigers coming in. Three-point shooting hasn't been a strength for either team, but Bowling Green got their three-point shooting going in quarter number two after starting 0 for 6. The Falcons hit three of their last six. The points in the paint. If Bowling Green stays with that advantage, you like Bowling Green's chances. And another notable stat is the second chance points. Actually, Memphis leading in points from second chance points, having 10 over Bowling Green's six. So point to bring that back to that Coach Fralick mentioned earlier is pretty much just the rebounding right now. Memphis is down, but the points they're getting from second chance points could be huge for them going into the second half of play. 
taking a look at some individual stats we mentioned earlier, but Day really just dominating right now for the Falcons. She has 10 points, four rebounds, one assist right behind her. Lexi Fleming really bringing the momentum, getting things going both defensively and offensively, hitting two really big th threes brings her to eight points. And on the other side for Memphis, it's really Riddick who is leading the Tigers right now. Ten points, five rebounds. Those are your first half numbers. When we come back, we'll tell you more about how Allison Day and Jamal either Clemson or Florida. And Allison Day coming off that 25-point, 10-rebound performance. Well, she's got 10 on 50% shooting in that first half, whereas Jamira shoots, well, points have been hard to come by. A scoreless first half. She's only attempted one shot, has a couple of rebounds, but her absence at the offensive end has been noticeable. Absolutely, and shoots a player who's averaging over 15 points a game to go a full first half of basketball game without scoring. I mean, that's obviously making an impact on the Memphis Tigers right now. Shoots playing just eight minutes in that first half. Well, Allison Day has been in and out, rotating there with Sophie Zekin and Olivia Hill. The bench production that Bowling Green got in that first half was big when the Falcons battled foul trouble with Alyssa Brett and Jocelyn Tate. They were able to just pull other players off the bench and just have everyone come out and perform. We even saw some players that we don't normally see till the very end of the game coming in super early, getting their minutes in and proving that they deserve to be out on the court right now. Falcons also paving the way for their teammates giving them some leeway with the scoring and allowing them to come in. And when you come into this game and you would have said Bowling Green's going to be battling foul trouble throughout the game, you'd have said, well, that's going to hurt, knowing that Nyla Hampton also not available tonight. Absolutely. Not having Nyla Hampton, you would think would be a big impact for them, but Falcons just a huge team that has a bench that's able to perform for them. Obviously, the loss of Nyla Hampton is impacting them in a way that they miss her. They want her to be out there. They miss her talent. However, it's really just a matter of stepping up and performing. Sweet 16, you have to do what you have to do. These are the last two teams playing postseason basketball in their respective conference. Bowling Green has a seven-point advantage. When we return, Nyla Hampton will be set to go for the third quarter. She's still enjoying herself. Bowling Green in the WNIT. Looking to be a part of the final eight teams with a win here. Then the question mark would be, would Bowling Green be back at home for the next round, or would they be at Clemson or Florida? Won't find out until both games go final. Those are some big differences, staying home or going to either of those two schools. How about Bowling Green holding Memphis to 23 points in that first half after holding Green Bay to 51 points for the game in that second round? That was an 18-point win for Bowling Green. Green Bay had not lost at home by as many as 18 points in 15 years. He had to go back to the 90-66 to loss to Cleveland State in the 2008 Horizon League Final. And the only explanation for that is just a huge credit to the Falcons' defense. And we weren't kidding when we said coming in. This was not going to be an offensive showdown. These are two teams that have gotten it done with their defense all season long. That's where it starts. That's where it ends. I think the offense is helping bring a lot of momentum into the game, but it's definitely what's not winning for the game for the Falcons right now. Off the leg of Day, picked up by Velasco. Allison Day underneath the cutting. Jocelyn Tate, who flips it up and in. A half dozen now for Tate. Bowling Green by nine. Good start to the quarter. Bowling Green's largest lead in that first half was 10. Jefferson, that's Griggs up top for three, back rim. Tate going after the rebound, and that was all Jocelyn Tate. No one was going to take that basketball away from her. She was undercut by Jefferson. Still made sure Jefferson was okay as she kind of fell right on top of her. Good sportsmanship there from Tate, who now has six points, four rebounds. Tate does have a few double-doubles this season. Could be in for number four tonight in Bowling Green's biggest game. Day out to Velasco. Brett, catch and shoot. Yes! Bowling Green's got four triples. There's the first for Brett. That's just her second field goal. 
The timing is what you want from Brett, a very timely scorer. They work it around the perimeter to Jefferson. Riddick cut off on the baseline. Thomas too hard off the glass. And Day is tied up. Possession arrow to Memphis. Look at this battle for the rebound. Three, four players getting a touch on it. You play to the whistle out here. Fleming going up against Thomas on that shot, too. Being a part of that miss. Guard against the forward. Thomas was trying to post up. Down to five, Jefferson. Offensive foul, Tate takes the charge. Tate understood the situation, got in great position. Jefferson was trying to beat the shot clock. Easy call. And there was no doubt that was an offensive foul, but if that's called the other way, that's Tate's third. Here's Day. Fleming, now Brett. Memphis, just like quarter number two, getting off to a slow start at the offensive end. Bowling Green turns it over on this possession. The Falcons' fifth turnover. Tigers with 11. Griggs off glass. Four points for Griggs. Her season average is 12. Can she get going? Tate on the low block. Thomas has it. Memphis a chance to get this back to a single digit deficit. Shoots, attacks. Her first points of the night. That's Jamira Shoots getting downhill, which you cannot let happen if you're an opponent. Inside, Tate got position. Pump fake, scores, and one. Didn't need the pump fake, still sold it, and earns a free throw. Such a smart play for the sophomore. Waiting on that shot. Might as well get the extra point if you can. Katie Hempling and Sophie Zekin check in for Fleming and Day. Great opportunity to get Fleming and Day some rest while Bowling Green's looking at a double-digit lead. And there's your score right now between the Gators and Clemson, 14 to six, almost midway through that first quarter. You're just joining us, the winner of this game will play the winner of Florida and Clemson. Tate now has nine. And Samantha, I hope. And Bowling Green comes out on top here, that that game is played right here at the Stroh. Foul away from the basketball as Thomas just shoved Brett to the floor. And Brett gets up like, are you kidding me? I'm right here with you, hoping that they play right back at the Stroh. And the physicality of this game has been on display from the start. But keep your eyes on Alyssa Brett and Thomas moving forward here. And that was Schutz who actually knocked Brett to the floor. And I can understand that. Alyssa Brett, when she's guarding you, she's relentless. She's in your face the entire time. It can frustrate you. How do you handle yourself? Well. It hasn't been a pretty offensive night for shoots. She hasn't found space, and there, she let her frustration get the best of her. Some intentional fouls right now could be, could be a big loss for Memphis. And Katrina Merriweather getting her words in there with the officials. I think the replay on this could go either way. Yeah, is there going to be a flagrant called here? It is. It is a push. She did push her with her hand. However, the way that the Tigers were looking away from Brett on that. Makes it look like it maybe wasn't intentional. If there was contact up around the neck and the head, then no I would definitely. say this gets upgraded to a flagrant. 
And I think it's just going to stay an offensive foul, Bowling Green basketball, the personal on shoots. However, it is something that the Tigers then will have to watch out for moving forward because if that were to happen again, then I believe it would be called as an intentional. You can see right from the get-go as shoots was trying to get position through the arm a couple of times right here and then right there. Yeah, Brett just not backing down as she shouldn't. However, just a lot of contact. Well, while the officials continue to sort things out, Jenna de Blasi had a chance to catch up with Memphis head coach Katrina Merriweather coming out of the locker room. I just spoke with Memphis' head coach Katrina Merriweather, who told me that it's been an adjustment not having senior Jemiah shoots on the court tonight. But she said that we've been down at halftime before, so we talked about composure in the locker room and putting more pressure on the perimeter and taking one at a time. And for Katrina Merriweather, she's trying to build something special at Memphis. First couple of seasons, she's been successful. They're coming out of the Horizon League as the head coach at Wright State. Played at the University of Cincinnati. Had some postseason success there. Merriweather, when she got the job at Memphis, you talked to a lot of head coaches in Division I basketball, and they said that was a steal for Memphis. Mid-American Conference, Trisha Cullop took note of how good it was going to be for Memphis to have Merriweather as the head coach. And Trisha Culp is one of the most respected coaches in the Mid-American Conference. Toledo winning the MAC title this year and advancing to the second round of the NCAA tournament before being knocked out by Tennessee at Tennessee. And Tennessee, let's be honest, that's a Storybrooke program built by Pat Summit and still very successful. The MAC has been well represented. They had three teams in the WNIT. Kent State, Ball State, and of course the Bowling Green Falcons. When you're Bowling Green, you're making a run here in the WNIT. If you're able to be successful, especially outside of the conference next season, you always got to win that Mid-American Conference Tournament title to get that automatic bid. But the MAC coaches are trying to tell you the MAC should be at least a two-team bid league. Absolutely. We talked about earlier how going into the WNIT might have even been a better move for the Falcons rather than going into the official tournament. Bowling Green by 11. Three minutes gone by in quarter number three. Velasco looking for an open teammate. Doesn't have her dribble. Zekin had an open lane. Tate was begging for the basketball. Tate puts it on the floor. Finds Zekin. Good grab there by Zekin, but couldn't score it. It's one she'd like back. Shoots. Three. No. Tate's pass tipped and stolen. Great hands by Brown. Tate being smart about her fouls right now, too. It's Thomas. The freshman turns, contact from Zekin. Sophie Zekin's first. And that's okay. Just number one on Zekin. Go make Thomas earn it at the line. Shoots less than 50% at the charity stripe. And Brett, you got to be careful with that swipe that you don't pick up your third. Memphis tonight, 9 of 14 at the line. Most of their free throws actually came in the first quarter when they were 9 of 12. And Robin Frelick noted that going into halftime when Bowling Green's defense stopped fouling. That improved the Falcons' situation. Bowling Green outscored Memphis by six in quarter number two. Falcons sitting on a double-digit lead four minutes into the third. Day to Tate. Tate attacks. Here's Griggs. Step back. That's a long two. Bowling Green's going to live with that shot. It's not a high percentage shot. A little bit rushed for the Tigers, too. You said it. Now shoots off the steal. 
Tate. That's number three on Tate, and that's not the way you want to pick it up. You're trying to slow up Memphis, but you reached right in. Velasco back in. Has to be hard taking Tate out of the game right now. She's doing so much for the Falcons that it's, it's almost like, do you want to risk it with her in there right now, or do you pull her out and be safe? Right, because Tate's been one of the best at putting the ball on the floor and getting to the basket. The second leading scorer with nine points. Allison Day just ahead by one. And you still have Fleming out there who's got eight points with a couple of threes. Remember, Katie Hempling had a three in that first half to help Bowling Green's bench production. Jada Wright turns short. Back to Bowling Green. Memphis still just 22% field goal shooting, while Bowling Green at 36%. Falcons on the season, 44%. Underneath, Hempfling swatted. Brown got a piece of it. Crossover from Shoots goes behind the back. The handles, but is denied by Hempfling. Got around one Falcon, got around another Falcon, but not getting by Kitty Hempfling. Things are heating up here inside the Stroh. Both teams getting after it. You're seeing the intensity, and it's Bowling Green by 10 with 4.43 left in the third. And Allison Day finding Jocelyn Tate. Bowling Green got off to a strong start in this quarter. Sitting on a 10-point lead right now. Game, and here at the end, in the last play, trying to get to the basket, was denied by Kitty Humpling. Shows her frustration there, looking for a foul call and then continued to show her frustration, leading to an unsportsmanlike call going into the bench. So Bowling Green's gonna have a chance to add to their lead with some free throws coming out of the timeout. You remember, Jamira shoots coming into this game. Her last three games have been scoring 20 plus points. In 23 against Ball State, 24 against Jackson State in the opening round of the WNIT. With just two points tonight. And the Tigers are feeling the loss of her presence for scoring right now. Shoots, averages 15 a game. Griggs averages 12 a game. The two have combined for six points tonight. Memphis really just finding, struggling to find one person to step up on offense right now, which is kind of what they need. So someone to step up and get it going. Riddick tried earlier. She has 10, but been, has been pretty quiet in the second half. The update on Florida and Clemson. Things remain tight after the first 10 minutes there. WNIT Super 16. Bowling Green by 14. Allison Day now has a dozen. Right over the fingertips of Williams on that one. A strong take. Day knows this could be her last time in a Bowling Green uniform. She doesn't want to go home. She wants another chance to play here at the Stroh. Williams back out. Three on the way. Jackson, no. Tigers, two of 11 beyond the arc. Fleming into day. Cross court, Brett. Three. Yes, sir. Alyssa Brett's now in double figures. Bowling Green has opened up a 17 point lead. It's a 10 point advantage for Bowling Green in this quarter. Griggs, a little, little bump, maybe a little touch foul there from Olivia Hill. Hill's fourth. And Jocelyn Tate's headed to the scores table. It's just the switching off between Tate and Hill. Now, which one can stay on the floor longer right now? <laughs> it's okay. They need the aggressiveness right now, so it's proving to work well for the Falcons. Yeah. 
Griggs, the three, rims out. And Gay is fouled by Williams, trying to pull in the rebound. First on Lynetta Williams. Riggs just trying to get something going. I mean, 85 threes on the season. Has not hit one from distance tonight. Just had three threes in each of the first two WNIT games. And Madison Griggs, she's first all time in career threes at Memphis. 263. Also holds the single season record and the single game record. But as we've noted, it has not been Madison Griggs' night. Same story for Jamira Shoots. Allison Day, the first free throw, good. Another efficient night for Allison Day. Six of 11 from the field and two of two on that trip to the free throw line. The lead is 19 as we approach three minutes left in the third. Picked up by Fleming on a pass right at the ankles of Brown. Good find up ahead by Fleming. It's Velasco to Brett. Staying hot, Alyssa Brett. This is all Bowling Green. To the basket, Amani Jefferson. That quiets the crowd for a second. And Lexi Fleming going up the floor. A little contact with Amani Jefferson. Here's Tate. Pump fake up, and it'll be two free throws for Jocelyn Tate. You're bowling green right now. You're seeing the frustration from Memphis. They're trying to be physical, trying to get in their heads a little bit. You just got to keep your head if you're bowling green and recognize you're leading by 20. Here's a look at that last three from Alyssa Brett. That was a no-doubter when she let that go. That looked pretty. Effortless. The arc on her shot the past few times has been just seamless. For Alyssa Brett, Bowling Green record, 58 threes in Mid-American Conference play. Brett said a couple of threes in this quarter, giving her 90 threes on the season. She just passed Morgan McMillan for third most threes all time in a single season. Single season record holder for threes at Bowling Green, Madison Parker, 98. Number two is Lauren Prohaska, 92. Prohaska, the all-time leading scorer at Bowling Green. Zeke in posting up. Falcons working around the perimeter. Tate drives hard, ran right into Riddick. It's Jocelyn Tate to the line. For Riddick, her third. Yeah, Riddick still sliding. And if the game seems physical now, you have to believe that the fourth quarter is going to be even more. And Bowling Green, you go into that fourth quarter, the biggest thing you got to do is just continue to run your offense. Don't try and melt the clock away and, and worry about that. Definitely. It's a, it's a mental thing when the game starts to become that physical. Just over two to play in the third. 53-30, Bowling Green over Memphis. Offensive foul. Jocelyn Tate takes another charge. Big smile there with Lexi Fleming afterwards. Got position. Well outside the circle. Textbook. Tate dribbled it off her foot. Still able to pick it up. Good cut by Brett. Got the members bounce, extending Bowling Green's lead. Give that assist to Zekin. Three no good from the corner. 
Bowling Green will have the basketball. A timeout has been called. Bowling Green, seven point lead at the break, is up to 25 with 136 left in the third. I think the Bowling Green students love it. Just over a minute remaining in the third. Bowling Green in complete control. 55 to 30. Falcons led 30 to 23 at half. Fleming up top three. Offensive board, Jocelyn Tate. It's her sixth rebound. Also has 12 points. One of three Bowling Green players in double figures. Velasco bumped, taking it to the basket. Memphis on defense right now, really packing it in inside the paint. It's where a lot of their fouls are coming from. The Falcons are just forcing it inside the paint, which is a good thing. They're able to get those foul calls for them. However, it's also benefiting the Falcons outside the arc because they're able to score pretty easily without much contest. Amy Velasco, first point of the night. On the season, 67%. Five points and 11 assists to help the Falcons get here. Two for two. Tell you what, after the first quarter, you wouldn't have thought at this point Bowling Green would have the advantage of the free throw line. And Bowling Green is now 15 of 18, while Memphis was 9 of 12 at the end of the first. They're 10 of 16 right now. Bowling Green 40% from the field, Memphis 22%. Griggs, no. Memphis now 2 of 14 beyond the arc. Maddie Griggs again. There's a lid on that rim for Griggs. We get a Memphis foul. Good look from the corner right there. And then Fleming took a lot of contact from Welch. And that was Fleming's ball. Katie Hempfling in for Jocelyn Tate. Nice hand from the crowd as Tate goes to the bench. That one hit every part of the cylinder, but would not go down. Now coming into this game, I don't know if you would have expected Bowling Green to be up by 27. <laughs> Hasn't been a dominant offensive performance for Bowling Green, but defensively, the Falcons have been on top of it. 15 Memphis turnovers, making nothing easy in the paint. As soon as the Falcons started to become dominant, there hasn't been a moment since where they've laid off. And I think that's a big explanation for the lead right now. And not allowing Memphis to catch their breath or slow things down. The Falcons just keep coming. Keep adjusting. They keep putting on the press. We've seen a lot of double teaming tonight from the Falcons. Really just causing havoc for the Tigers. Alyssa Brett is going to be subbed out with 24 seconds left in the quarter. Welch looking for a driving lane. Welch, free throw line, pull up. Final seconds, there's Thomas, and Thomas was hit. 
with .9 on the clock. That's about the only thing that hasn't gone right for Bowling Green in this quarter. Just could not keep Thomas off the glass there. Now the officials trying to sort out if this foul was on the floor or if this was on the way up. I thought this was going to be two shots, and it is. Falcon fans don't like the call, but I think it's the right call. I would have to agree with that. Definitely going up. Three points, 11 rebounds for Destiny Thomas. And you got another look at it. Still the right call, I think. Time expires. Three quarters in the books, and it's Bowling Green by 27. Bowling Green outscoring Memphis in the third, 28 to 8. The Falcons are 10 minutes away from becoming part of the final eight in the WNIT. As Alyssa Brett heated up, one of three Falcons in double figures. It's all Bowling Green, folks. The fans and the students have showed out, and so has the athletic staff. Jenna de Blasi standing by with Bowling Green Athletic Director. Hey, Derek, I had to come up here and visit you. It looked like you were having too much fun. How's the atmosphere here tonight? Oh, it's great. These students are making a difference in the game. Every single time that something lights up, they light up. And they're feeding off of each other. It's a great energy tonight. Absolutely. And the Lady Falcons, they got quite a lead right now. What do you think of their performance? Oh, outstanding performance. They're playing with heart. They played with, they played all year long. They play toughness and heart, and I love it. Well, thanks so much, Derek, for being with us. Thank you very much. Brad, back to you. And Bowling Green fans loving what they're seeing on the floor. A 28-point lead as both teams successful on their first possession of the quarter. And Amy Velasco was just fouled. The Bowling Green students going to let Memphis know about it. And Shelby Brown just shaking her head after this call. And Brown had her arm wrapped around Velasco, then tripped her up. Here's Fleming, left wing. Fleming's got nine, along with four rebounds, three steals. Velasco blocked. Good play by Brown. Griggs underneath Shelby Brown. Tried to power her way up and draws a whistle against Allison Day. Second on Day. For Day, as much as she has to battle inside, might be a little bit surprised it's just her second personal foul. Memphis 11 of 18 at the line tonight. Brown will shoot one more. Brown's a 75% free throw shooter. Right now everyone's going to be keeping their eyes on that Clemson Florida game. And everyone's going to be wondering Will Bowling Green be back at home for the next round? Alyssa Brett off the mark. Long rebound out to Jefferson. Jefferson looking to take it all the way. Euro step and a Bowling Green foul. That's the best case scenario right now for Memphis. Keep getting to the line, try and work their way back into this. Not any time coming off the clock. Back and forth basketball continues between Florida and Clemson. 36-33, your score. And that's not the first time that we've seen that attempt from Jefferson. Kind of been her move all game long to get the steal and then go all the way with it. Floater over the top of the rim. Five points, seven rebounds for Jefferson. Even Jefferson, a player that averages in double figures. All three players from Memphis that average in double figures shoots Griggs and Jefferson all in single digits here tonight. Those three have combined for 13. Timeout taken, 
8.37 left in the ballgame. We'll be back. It's truck month. Time to be fearless and bold. It's time to stop waiting. It's time for you to be a Ram. Now during Ram Truck Month, get 0.9% financing for 60 months or get 11300 in total values on the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Want long wear that's light as air? Infallible fresh wear from L'Oreal Paris. Coverage that's lightweight, buildable, breathable. Resist transfer, up to 24-hour wear. With infallible fresh wear from L'Oreal Paris. We're, we're worth it. it. Bowling Green 61, Memphis 35, WNIT Super 16. The Falcons have been in command since they outscored Memphis by 20 in the third quarter. Bowling Green still shooting about 40% from the field, while Memphis has been in the low 20s pretty much the entire night. Shot clock winding down. Day had to get a shot up. Here's Maddie Griggs. It's the first time Memphis has been able to do that all game long. Griggs will give it up. It's worked over to Shoots. Shoots for three. Memphis has yet to hit a three in this second half. 0 of 8 and 2 of 16 for the ball game. And that's not a rhythm three. That's just seeing a little bit of space to trying to get something to go. Tigers have a lot of work to do still in this fourth quarter. The spin by shoots off glass. For shoots, her second field goal. Underneath, Day blocked. Falcons had an opportunity there after Brown went down. Good effort there by Jefferson, staying with the play. And Jefferson hits the deck. It's a blocking foul. We'd like to see this one again. Jefferson can't believe this wasn't called offensive. Let's see. She did go down hard, but it almost didn't look like it was Brett. It almost looked like it was her own teammate. And Jefferson may be trying to say that Brett put the shoulder down, yeah. but it looked as though Brett was almost pulling up, not going into the body of Jefferson. Yeah. And that is how the night ends for Imani Jefferson, her fifth foul. Fleming finds Day underneath. Day gathered, took one dribble, and adds two more. 16 for Day, including five assists and six rebounds. An all-around performance. Well, going for the steal, Fleming. A little contact with the arm of Green. The defense that you saw for Bowling Green in the second half against Green Bay carried over into the second half of this one against Memphis. And you're looking at another double-digit win for Bowling Green in the WNIT. Offensive foul. This time again, shoots her third. Alyssa Brett really stepping up defensively tonight. Trying to fill a role for her teammate, Nyla Hampton. Three, Griggs. Tracked down by Jackson. Seven minutes to play. Griggs is blocked by Velasco. 
Falcons wisely slow it up and try and eat some clock. Fleming out to Tate. Worked her way to the block, into the paint. <laughs> That's a tough two for Date. Tate now has 14 points, six rebounds. Memphis right now almost just in shock. Unable to find any clarity right now on offense. Jackson trying to shake Brett. Out of bounds. We're going the other way. Another thing we got to remind Bowling Green fans, the Falcons are on their way to their 30th win. Last time Bowling Green had 30 wins, the 2013-2014 season. That may be the end of the night for Tate and Day, the two exit with six minutes to play. The two combined for 30 points, 12 rebounds, and six assists. Fleming, no look pass to Zekin. It's Zekin to the line, and Fleming a little slow to get up. She might have gotten a little tangled up there inside as she got rid of it, going down awkwardly. And a big hand for Fleming as Olivia Hill checks in. <laughs> Off the mark with the first. Bowling Green, just their fifth miss at the line tonight, 16 of 21. One for two. Zeke in. Four points, four rebounds. In the lane, Welch hangs and scores. The bucket and the foul. Might be the fifth for Hill. <laughs> the night is not done for Jocelyn Tate. That is it for Olivia Hill. Completes the three-point play. Velasco surrounded. Picked up by Riddick. Riddick's going to the basket. Spins off of Hempfling. Puts it up and in. Velasco again trying to get out of trouble. Hempfling up ahead and too much on it. Bowling Green's 11th turnover. Memphis not backing down here despite being down 24 with 5.19 to play. Tigers are going to battle for all 40 minutes. For the Tigers right now, you don't have anything to lose. Too far underneath. Velasco. And fling over to Brett, finally able to find a little space. Velasco's a little gassed right now. Still gets in the paint, scores it with the left hand. Amy Velasco giving everything she has. Seven points, six assists, a couple of boards. That's great. Welch pull up with a hand in her face. Be sure to stay with us for our post-game coverage. We'll hear from Bowling Green's Allison Day and Bowling Green head coach Robin Fralick. Hempfling out to a wide open Tate. <laughs> Everyone in the building wanted Tate to let that one go. Hempfling will let it fly. Under four minutes. Shoots. 
Top of the arc for three. Seven points for shoots. About halfway to her season average. Zeke in deep position. Shoots again. That puts Shoots in double figures, but it's a 20 point game with 3.35 left. And a timeout has been called. 68 48. Bowling Green on their way to the next round of the WNIT. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Jocelyn Tate with the basketball. Memphis just cut the lead to 18 after the timeout. We've got less than three minutes to play. Velasco had it poked away, able to gather it. This defense has been relentless for Memphis over the last few minutes. They're going to make Bowling Green have to earn it. This game all changed in the third quarter when the Falcons outscored Memphis by 20. I don't know how many people expected that coming into the Super 16 of the WNIT to see that much separation. And Bowling Green led by 27 after three quarters. Velasco, eight points. She'll be looking for nine right here. And all the production offensively for Amy Velasco coming in the second half. First half, she just kept the ball moving. Pull up three, Griggs buries it. Her first three tonight. Velasco without a shoe right now. And the official recognizes. Amy Velasco comes back. Gets the shoe tossed to her. That's Amy Velasco, though. <laughs> shoe comes off, playing with one, still going to go until the whistle. <laughs> 70 to 53, Bowling Green leads Memphis with two and a half to play. Falcons on their way to their 30th win, representing the Mid American Conference here tonight. You can only hope if you're a Falcon fan that Bowling Green plays the next round here at the Stroh. Bowling Green will see the winner of Clemson and Florida next. Falcons defeated Liberty to get here in the first round, then Green Bay. It's a one-point ball game, Florida on top of Clemson at the break. And to come off an 18-point road win against Green Bay, return to your home floor, and have a double-digit lead with over two minutes to play. Says a lot about what Bowling Green has done here tonight. There's Day. 18 points. Bowling Green's going to improve to 13-2 and two here at home this season. The three for Griggs. Makes it a 16-point game. And stolen by Welch. Bowling Green getting a little careless. Underneath. To the line will be Brown. I love this effort from Memphis. Not packing it in. 
That, that starts right with your head coach and the staff and saying, you know, our season may come to an end here tonight. Well, we're fighting to the end. We're coming in here a record of 22 and 10, representing the American Athletic Conference, the number two team in that conference behind South Florida. I mean, their actions are proving in their mindset right now that they're still winning this game. So you have to credit the effort. Interested to see what next season looks like for Memphis with a player like Jamira Shoots, this being her fifth season. Jada Wright, another fifth year player. Maddie Griggs is a senior. One for two at the line, 15 point game. Fleming turns it over. Griggs three. And Velasco lets it go out of bounds. That would have really made things interesting if that three would have gone, would have made it a 12 point game. Fleming fouled from behind as Griggs tried to get the steal. First on Griggs. Fleming in and out. Lexi Fleming trying to become the fourth Bowling Green player to go for double figures. Would be her third straight game in this WNIT run with 10 or more points. Shoots in for Welch. No defense to offense substitution. Brett takes the charge, the off arm there from Shoots. That's number four on Jamira Shoots. Brett just really adjusting on how to guard Shoots tonight, realizing that some of the defense just can't slide. Hempfling looking up the floor. Now it's Fleming across the timeline. Less than 90 seconds. This clock can't tick down fast enough if you're Bowling Green. Hemphling, good job to come get it. And Velasco, a little too hot to handle on that one off the bounce. Micaiah Brooks in. Lynetta Williams out. From the wing, that's Jackson. Bowling Green has it with less than a minute to play, leading by 16. Stolen. Griggs. Shoots. Three is good. 13-point game. That's 13 points now for Shoots. And for Shoots, all 13 coming in the second half. And this was a 20 Seven point lead for Bowling Green at one point. 13 point game with 43 seconds remaining. Memphis not going quietly. This was a 30 point lead for Bowling Green at one point. 61 to 31 with 9.51 to play. Bowling Green led by 30. You have to wonder, maybe Bowling Green just getting a little tired, giving that all-out effort for three and a half quarters. But look at Memphis, the scoring. 31 points through three quarters, 29 here in the fourth. And you see right there, there's the proof of the second and third quarter really causing problems there for Memphis. You can't afford to have single-digit scoring quarters. Velasco trying to avoid the trap is called for a walk. 
Maybe a little shuffle of the feet there. She tried to get out of the trap. A tough call, but nonetheless, Amy Velasco being really strong as a ball carrier tonight. And you're looking at the turnover numbers, and you're saying now there's a combined 35 turnovers in this game, but Bowling Green's had about eight or nine in the last five minutes to make things look a little tighter than what they've been for three and a half quarters. Back rim for Welch, gets her own miss. Front rim that time. Memphis still looking for another Bowling Green turnover. It's up ahead to Velasco. Falcons are going to play keep away. Bowling Green fans rise to their feet here inside the stroke. The final seconds are going to tick down. Seventy-three to sixty, the final. Bowling Green, not done yet. The Falcons now a part of the Elite Eight, the Great Eight in the WNIT. Bowling Green will await the winner of Florida and Clemson. We'll see if Bowling Green hosts in the next round. The Falcons, their 30th win of the season. And things still getting a little out of hand, even as these two teams were shaking hands. And Bowling Green's got to be careful not to respond here. But you do not like to see this. And Robin Frelick wants to know what happened. Talking with the Memphis coaching staff. Melissa Brett is down on the floor. And Bowling Green's just going to try and get to the locker room. And Alyssa Brett, not okay right now. It's great to see her back on her feet. See if we can get a look again at what happened here at the end. Going through the line, Alyssa Brett. Had something to say there with Jamira Shoots, and Shoots was the one to stop to say something there, and then Shoots hit Brett in the face. You don't like to see an ending like this. It will be Bowling Green moving on. 70 to 73 to 60 will be the final. And Bowling Green will get ready for the winner of Clemson and Florida. As Jenna de Blasi is standing by with Allison Day. Back and forth game at the start, but you guys took off running in the second. What was the turning point? Um, I think it was before the game. I mean, we knew they were a good team. They just beat Ball State. We know Ball State's a great team. So we knew from the beginning we had to be strong and we had to be physical as well. Absolutely. Tonight marks 30 wins for the program, and you guys get a shot in the Elite Eight. For tonight, as a senior, what's this moment like? It's really cool. I mean, I wanted to do something I've never done before, and this is definitely surpassing that. So it's really cool to be a part of this atmosphere and this team. Absolutely, and this crowd has been amazing tonight and all season long. How much support have you received from this community? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are. If you see a BG fan, they're telling you a great job and keep going. So the support is really amazing. That's awesome, Allison. Enjoy the win. Thanks, Thanks Brad. I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Jenna. I am joined now by Bowling Green head coach Robin Fralick. And coach, your team earned this one tonight. 30th win of the season. The first time Bowling Green has won 30 games in the season since 2013-2014. You continue on in the WNIT. Just how special is it right now with this team? This team's so much fun to coach. I'm so glad we get more time together. Our fans are amazing. Uh, you know, to put 30 wins together in a season takes a lot of consistency and a lot of focus, and this group has continued to do that. A couple of ways to look at this game here tonight. We'll start with that third quarter. You outscore Memphis by 20 points after a seven-point lead going into the locker room. What adjustments or what did you get back to going into that second half? 
thought we guarded really well. We rebounded. You know, we knew coming in this game, rebounding and keeping them off the free throw line was going to be really important. And fourth quarter, I thought it got a little squirrely. It's sometimes hard to pit play with a big lead. You know, we got to take better care of the ball. But uh, so proud of our team. Our defensive effort was outstanding. Um, and I just thought we played great team basketball. And what a fun atmosphere. I mean, it feels so our student section, our fans. It was it was great to be here. The defensive effort, you got to continue to talk about that because Alyssa Brett's effort on Jermyra yeah. shoots here tonight, along with the effort that was done against Maddie Griggs, an excellent outside shooter. Those two combined come in, average 27 points a game, but for three and a half quarters, you shut them down. Well, we knew coming in, they're really good one-on-one -on -one scorers, you know, but Alyssa's an elite defender. I think she's one of the best defenders in the country. She can guard so many spots, and, you know, she, does, she drew a lot of fouls tonight, too, so... Uh, she did a she did a great job. And this can't go unnoted as well. What your bench is doing for you. Yeah. Taking you back to the Mid American Conference tournament semifinals against Ball State. Jocelyn Tate, Alyssa Brett, same situation. Battling foul trouble in the first half. You go to this ball game, just like that game. Olivia Hill gives you great minutes. Yeah. Katie, Katie Hempfling steps up, hits a big shot. They do. Sophie Zekin continues to give you great production. Yeah. They, they were great, and we knew we needed them, especially with Nyla not playing in the game tonight, and they stepped up. I thought they guarded and rebounded the basketball exceptionally well. Coach, thank you for your time. Great. On to the next round. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bowling Green head coach Robin Fralick as Bowling Green is into the great eight of the WNIT. The Falcons, their 30th win of the season. For Memphis, the season comes to an end at 22-11. and 11. That is going to do it for us here inside the Stroh Center. I want to thank my broadcast partner, Samantha Molmeyer, our director, Brandon Walters, our sideline reporter, Jenna de Blasi, and our entire crew. Tonight's broadcast can only be seen on ESPN. Bowling Green continuing on in the WNIT. The Falcons not done yet.